Hey guys, this is Nick, and welcome to my Linux experiment. It's no secret that I'm a big fan of Elementor OS, and it's not just because I think it's a beautiful desktop that is slick and simple, but it's also because I think the team behind this distro is trying to build something more than just yet another take on the Linux desktop. So I think it's time we take a look at what makes Elementor OS more than just another Linux distribution. Let's start right after this. Skillshare is an online learning community that gets you access to thousands of classes to learn a new skill, master a new hobby, or just improve on something that you already know, real-world skills or otherwise. Learning about Linux, for example, is easy thanks to a bunch of courses on improving your skills on the command line, becoming a sysadmin, or just generally learning more about Linux's internals. Personally, I'm taking these classes on color correction in DaVinci Resolve. Skillshare is affordable with free account creation and your access to Skillshare Premium being only $8 a month. This gives you access to all the chapters in all the classes and offline viewing. Now the first thousand subscribers that click the link in the description below will get a free trial of Skillshare Premium, so head over there and start learning. Okay, the first reason is the Pantheon desktop. Pantheon is the desktop environment for Elementor OS. Contrary to popular belief, it is not a spin on GNOME 3 with a few extensions. It is built out of GDK, for sure, but it is not based on GNOME Shell, and the default programs that ship with Elementor OS are custom made for Elementor in the most part. There are some exceptions, like Epiphany, like the Document Viewer, and some other bits and pieces out there, but generally most applications that ship by default as well as the panel and the dock are custom built for Elementor OS. That's, they form the desktop environment called Pantheon. So at a first glance, it looks very similar to what Mac OS X would do, but in use, you notice a ton of small differences that make Pantheon really its own spin on the dock and top panel uh, set of rules. And the interesting thing about Pantheon is that it is mostly exclusive to Elementor OS. The code is open source, of course, anyone could compile it and try to run it on another distro. But no other distro really does ship a version of Pantheon, which is complete with all the bells and whistles and the app center that Elementor OS offers. More on that later. This is a very peculiar place to be in for a desktop environment because you've got your GNOME, KDE, Cinnamon, like Mate, XFC, whatever, all of these other desktop environments are generally easy to install on other distributions. But Pantheon is not something that other distros ship. And I think there's something about the library versions that they use to build the desktop. They're, they're building it on older versions of GDK, and as such, it would be a problem, a compatibility problem, to ship that on other distributions. I think there's an issue like that. But it still puts Elementor OS in its own category because it's virtually the only distro that ships Pantheon in a complete state. Now, the fact that Elementor OS has its own desktop environment also means that they have their own set of guidelines. And sure, these are super close to what GNOME offers in terms of guidelines to create an application that looks and feels native to the desktop environment. There's mostly header bars, buttons in the header bars. It's, it's a simple thing. There, there are a few little differences between the GNOME apps and the Elementor OS apps in terms of icon design and uh, in terms of symbolic icons or not. But generally, they are very similar, which means that GNOME applications will mostly look at home on Elementor OS and Elementor OS designed apps will look mostly at home on GNOME as well. Now, the second reason why Elementor OS stands apart is its app center. And in and of itself, the app center is just another graphical way to install applications. It's not a package manager because you can't search for libraries through it, but you can install drivers and every single graphical app that you might want is available in there. Now, since Elementor OS is based on Ubuntu, the latest Ubuntu LTS, it means that you can install virtually any single piece of software that is available for Ubuntu through the App Center. But it also offers applications specifically designed for Elementor OS, and we'll talk about them in the next point. But where the App Center is really interesting on Elementor OS and where it's really different from other desktop installers software, like, like the GNOME software or the uh, KDE applications, what's his name? Discover, that's it, Discover. Yes, okay. So compared to Discover or GNOME software, the App Center offers a payment method. This is something that has been controversial because lots of people seem to think that open source equals free as in free beer, like everything should be free and not paid for. And that's a huge misconception. 
there is nothing preventing somebody from doing an open source application and asking people to pay for it. And that's exactly what Elementary OS allows developers to do with a specific twist on it, and it's the pay what you want model. This model allows the developer to set an asking price, let's say for example $5, but a user can decide to give the developer whatever it wants. It, it can be $0, it can be $100, there's no limit. You, you could say, I want to pay this app $1,000 if you want. You could. Or you could just say, I don't know if I'm gonna like this app, I'm gonna give $0 for now, and if I like it, I can always pay for it later. This model is very interesting because it works within the open source development thing. Like, generally, if you're creating an open source app, the convenience of having the package is what you're paying for. Like having a pre-compiled package to download and install is generally what you're paying for because if you don't want to buy the package, you can always compile the code yourself. It can be tricky, not every single user will be able to do it, and Elementary OS allows users to kind of breach that barrier. Like, hey, okay, developers, you want some money for your hard work, it's normal, but I also want to make sure that the application suits a purpose for me before I buy it. Elementary OS is the only distribution where you can do that, and it's virtually the only distribution where you can actually buy software from a developer. Every other distro doesn't have something that you can pay for, and it's really strange to me. Now, the third reason why Elementary OS is specifically positioned in terms of being a platform more than a distribution is with its own app ecosystem and SDK. Having its own guidelines and its own desktop environment, Elementary OS also has its own application ecosystem. And you might think, well, you can just use any other app, so why would you bother developing specifically for Elementary OS? And that question has an answer. 173, I think, or 178 apps have been specifically made for Elementor US with their design guidelines in mind. So sure, these are simple one-purpose apps in true Unix philosophy, but they are awesome. They look good, they work well, and they fill their purpose really handily. So you're not getting anything as complex as GIMP or Krita or OnlyOffice or OpenOffice, LibreOffice, whatever. There's no super complex programs in there. But some ideas are big, like for example Akira, which aims to be a competitor to Sketch. And sure, it's still in alpha, but it's super promising. And you also have some really well-designed applications like Planner, which is basically the best to-do list management or project management application that you can get on Linux, period. These all emanated from the Elementor OS App Center and the Elementor OS guidelines. And now these apps can be developed using the Elementor OS SDK. SDK is a big word, it's basically a meta package you can install that installs all the libraries that you could use to develop an Elementor OS app. Elementor apps are developed mostly using Vala, which is the language that they recommend, and also using GTK and the Granite library, which is something that the Elementor OS team has added on top of the GTK widgets to offer more possibilities and more integration with the Elementor OS look and feel. Now, the fourth reason why Elementary OS is kind of specific in the Linux distribution world is its semi-rolling release method. And Elementary OS is not the only distribution working like that. The most simple example is also KDE Neon. These distributions work with a stable base that only gets security patches and some hardware enablement updates to support more newer hardware, like later on, but generally they get their desktop and the desktop environment gets updates in a rolling release fashion. That's what Elementor OS does. It's based on the Ubuntu LTS base, which is for now 18.04, but will be 20.04 when Elementor OS 6 Odin releases. And on top of that, they add regular updates, generally monthly, to the desktop environment. So as soon as it's ready, you get the update, you get the new features, you get the improvements to the applications, bit by bit. And through the lifetime of the distro, you get updates to the features. This is interesting because you don't have to change a complete version to get some new features. You just wait until they're ready and then you get them. Compare that to, for example, Ubuntu, where you only get updates to the desktop environment when there's a new release coming out. So for example, you're using 20.04. To go to the next version of GNOME, you'll have to move to 20.10. Fully rolling releases like Arch or Manjaro, for example, do the same thing, but they also add the updates to the base itself, which can create stability issues and problems that you wouldn't have if you had been using an LTS base. So sure, there's a trade-off in terms of hardware support and in terms of the newer features that the Linux kernel will support, but generally, if an LTS works on your hardware right now, 
and you're not buying any new hardware, you don't really need to upgrade your base apart from the security updates that you get using a semi-rolling release like KDE Neon or Elementary OS. The newer features in the native kernel are generally small incremental improvements and won't bring your computer to new heights of performance. So unless you're changing hardware like graphics hardware, stuff like that, you're not really going to need to update your base that often. And that's where the semi-rolling release model of Elementary OS or KDE Neon comes into play. Okay, so Elementary OS has its own desktop environment. It has its own app center, well, app store, software distribution method at least. It has its own payment model. It has its own app ecosystem and SDK. And it's got a semi-rolling release model where users can get the latest features every time that they do a system update. What does that mean? How is that different from other distros? Well, it means that Elementary OS is uniquely positioned to not be just another Linux desktop distro. It's actually a platform. It's a platform for developers to develop applications. It's a platform for users to keep using that system and the desktop, getting updates, not having to wait too long, and having some specific features that you cannot find elsewhere. And the best thing is, this platform is open. Developers that decide to code their application for Elementary OS can also distribute them, and they do, on other software distribution platforms. Most of the Elementary OS specific apps are also available on FlatHub or through app images. You can get these applications without using Elementary OS, but the best experience with these applications and the best system integration will be on Elementary OS. It's a win-win situation for users and for developers, but there's still a bit of an issue. Elementary OS is not independent. They are based on Ubuntu and on the Ubuntu LTS basis. This means that if Ubuntu makes a decision, for example, to completely remove all 32-bit packages from the repos, Elementary OS will have to follow suit because they don't have their own repos, they don't have their own base that they completely customize, they don't build their own packages. They're going to be dependent on what Ubuntu does, and they could always move to another base, but it's going to be tricky and it's going to imply a lot of underlying changes. To be completely independent as a platform, Elementary OS should have its own base, its own base made from scratch, its own packages system, its own repositories, but I really don't see them doing that anytime soon. It's a lot of work, the team is still pretty small in terms of employees for the Elementary OS company, and it would bring no benefit apart from not suffering dire consequences if Ubuntu ever makes a decision that the Elementary team doesn't agree with. Now, apart from that, the Elementary OS team has it in the bag. They have their own app center, their own app ecosystem, which is growing. They have their own platform as an SDK. They have their own desktop experience, which is, in my opinion, the best for any kind of beginner or beginner user and the most simple to use. So generally, Elementary OS is at a unique position to become something more than just another Linux desktop distro. They can exist on the margins of what other distributions are doing. And I think that's super important. And that's it for this video, guys. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, don't hesitate to like or dislike if you didn't. If you really did like the video, you can always subscribe and turn on notifications so you can receive more videos like this one. And if you want to help support the channel, you can join my amazing Patreon subscribers and YouTube members and get access to a weekly exclusive Patreon cast and the right to vote on the next topics I'll cover. So thank you guys for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.